Hi and welcome to my channel. In today's video I wanted to talk about my newest release, the Cairo sweater. So originally I had planned to release this video, well not this video, I had recorded another video and I was planning to have the video released on, on the release day or the release weekend and that did not happen because in the end I was not happy with the quality of that recording. So yeah, before I kind of settle you with a video that is way too incoherent and way too dark, I thought I'd just take a moment and re-record it. And yeah, so now that the release is behind me, also the pressure is off and I don't have to sell you anything, right? Um, no, I mean, I like the idea of promotional videos published on the day of the release. Obviously it makes sense because not only you do get to see the pictures and all of that, but you also get to find out more about the, the pattern when it's the most relevant. I do really like the idea, I think it makes sense, but from the perspective of recording them, I think I'm still too new to this maybe, but I kind of struggle with these promotional videos. I just find it difficult to talk from a script. Um, no, I, I'm not good at that. So far my favorite video to record was actually the Knitting Diaries, the first episode and there's gonna be another one actually. But what I like about those is that you can just talk and you can just talk about whatever comes to your mind, whatever you're working, whatever you're thinking. So yeah, in today's video I'm just gonna talk about Caro. So let's talk about Caro. Caro sweater, my newest release, is actually one of the most, I don't know, I think to this date, I'm, I'm not really known for whimsical, I'm not really known, uh, not known, well, <laughs> Whimsical patterns are not normally my thing. My patterns can be fun to knit, they can be engaging for your brain or your hands, but they're not really super joyful and colorful and any of those things. And that is kind of changing as well because I'm kind of finding joy in being more playful as well. But I've always been a big fan of options and variety and ability to modify and of course the engaging factor that keeps you knitting, that keeps you knitting that next row. I like to give knitters options to just make the sweater their own or make the garment or accessory or whatever their own. There's often, not always, not every pattern is meant for that. Sometimes it's good to just have something straightforward but I often like to include these options. So this is the not shape-wise, because there's no optional shaping, auto shaping, of course there's shaping, but it's just non-negotiable, you have to do it. But this is the most customizable pattern I've released to date when it comes to color work. If you look at the testers projects, you can immediately just pause the video and go look at them. <laughs> no, no, please don't do that. Please watch it to the end, because it really helps a small creator like me. You can do so much, and I'm gonna show you some of the testers projects later and talk a little bit more about them. I also have like a bunch of swatches just showing you some variety, yeah showing you some options of what you can do within the realm of the yarn it was designed for. There's so many things you could do. This really is the most exciting design in terms of how you can play with it and what kind of yarn you can use and yarn combinations starting from the original Unspun Manchalope yarn and I've, I'm gonna talk about the yarn later. This is also the Ultimate Stash Poster project. I'm a big fan of Wool Dreamers project and Wool Dreamers yarns and Unspun yarn as well in general. It's not a secret that I love knitting with Unspun yarn. This year it really has changed but I used to be more color shy. I guess that comes from I never really wore many colors. I'm more like the neutrals or earthy palette kind of person but that is kind of changing as well and I think that right now with all the colors and, and the neon orange I've been knitting and, and all of that it doesn't seem so crazy anymore but it was kind of out of character at the time. So when Wool Dreamers first and I was a while ago, I'm not sure when anymore because what is time? Yeah, like I have no idea when in relation to what happened anymore, honestly. But when Wool Dreamers released these beautiful colors, they're really gorgeous. I don't know what it is about them. When they released these colors of Manchalopis, which is really one of my favorite yarns, the story is that I don't know how or where I saw them, but I saw them stacked together like, like this or kind of like in, in some combination like this. And I looked at them and I immediately thought, and apparently I wasn't the only one because I did an, an Instagram post asking you if you would knit, if you'd use these colors together. And if you said yes, there is something about this combination of colors that actually appeals to people and not only me. So yeah, as you can see, they really look good together. And when I first saw them together, I just wanted this to, to be a colorwork sweater on the background of white. So we have the, 
natural off-white mantello piece as a background. I also knew that I didn't want any kind of classic color work. I wanted something that had more versatility, something that was more joyful and whimsical and so I knew that I didn't want it to be too thick so I knew that I would have to use the white single-stranded pair of stranded silk hair because on its own it would be too fragile and too thin. Basically a single strand is fingering weight, double strand is DK, comes to Mancello piece. Wool Dreamer Sanspan yarn is kind of lighter than many others. I mean it depends on the blend of the other yarns as well but for example if you compare it to Plotu Lopi Icelandic Aspen yarn it is thinner. These held double are DK weight yarn and if I would use the main color in DK weight yarn that would just be a bit too thick. I tried swatching that it is just too dense. Yeah so Manchelo piece held single stranded and uh, held together with uh, some hair. I used Filcolana Tilia but in my original swatch I, and some of these other swatches I also used uh, knitting for olive, silk mohair and uh, you can really use just any silk mohair or any other lace weight yarn that you have on hand or that, that pairs well with the color you've chosen that you find appropriate. I also have here one from where I actually used alpaca lace and it's also a really great different result. It's less fluffy. I think one of the most notable things about this I think the main thing is that you need to understand is that the color work is not knit. It It's worked in this woven pattern. It is exclusively worked utilizing slip stitches. So first of all this design even though I normally would say that if you are new or inexperienced with Anspan yarn which means that you might need to be careful and the yarn is breaking a lot and if you're having any kind of trouble with that despite the complexity and it's not being like super straightforward super beginner friendly design or it's not stuck in it it's just color work this is actually great for unspun yarn beginners because first of all for the main color you're using a single strand yes but you're also using it with a single strand of silk mohair or other lace weight yarn and for example silk mohair really strong so it acts as a lifeline basically okay first of all like love manchelopis but I do have one, I wouldn't say gripe per se, but it's kind of like a yay and, and a really amazing thing if you're knitting with Manchelo Piece Double because you can knit straight from the plate, you don't even have to necessarily. You can, I would suggest it if you're using multiple colors because having multiple plates and using like three, two, three colors at the same time, having these multiple plates and multiple strands, it kind of can result in breakage more easily. But if you're just knitting with one color you could actually easily knit from the plate. I like rolling balls anyways it's kind of almost like a little castle ritual as well but with Manchelo piece I don't always. So <laughs> uh, you have like basically two strands whenever you take a plate of Manchelo piece you have two strands coming out of it. So if you want to knit single stranded you kind of need to separate them and if you were knitting single stranded on its own I would still say just you know try and roll some balls but in this case you have silk mohair acting as this this main yarn as this lifeline and so basically what I did the entire time swatching and knitting I just broke off like um, kind of like a semi semi long piece and I separate the strands and then I basically attach the strand where the last one ended yeah I just basically attach it and then I knit to the end of it and then I just attach the next one and if it breaks it's really it really isn't a big deal just keep doing that. Yeah so that's one reason it should be really easy if you're an Anspan yarn beginner. I wouldn't say that this is a beginner sweater because it, it does involve some shaping techniques it does involve some things like that so but if you are new to Anspan yarn if you never tried it I think it's a it's a good entry if you don't want to just knit plain stock net or garter stitch kind of. Anyways and the second reason is because when you're knitting with Anspan yarn on its own, if you're knitting with Manchelopi held double, well not knitting, if you're working with a Manchelopi held double like I did for the contrast color, because each of these these lines, I mean you can't see that far, like I need to swatch. So yeah, if you look at these, these little polka dots, little squares, kind of this little woven pattern, each of these is actually four strands of manchalopis. So they're kind of stacked on top of each other. So you have two strands you hold together and then you work another row of slipping stitches and just stacking the other two strands on top. If you're working just you know a single color in the row you can just use four. Just make sure not to twist them. But 
because of that you're working yeah you're working bunch of little piece on on their own yeah so you'll be using two strands and four strands in total um yeah per each row but because you are actually not knitting with it but you're just working with it using the yarn and you're shifting it between the stitches without actually knitting with it you don't put as much pressure on it that makes it really break way less honestly not at all it was the case for me it didn't really break two reasons why it's actually um, unspun yarn beginner friendly if you have had experience with unspun yarn breaking you're kind of frustrated with it, but you still want to try give this project a try the texture is super interesting i think it's one of the great things about it as well because not only have this textured woman pattern with these little bumps here you also have this lighter yarn in the background i think that is super important even if you're using a different kind of yarn i think that's important that you use fingering plus lace as your background and then anything from dk weight yarn to worsted depending on you need to swatch you need to see how the fabric behaves if it is too thick if you can work with that so whatever you you use for the color work as long as you meet the gauge it's fine. It's part of the charm. It's part of the, the really cool thing about it because you think that having all these quadruple <laughs> strands, all these double strands of Manchelo piece as color work would make this sort of really warm and thick, but honestly you use less of it than you think. I kind of used sort of equal-ish amount. You know, obviously it's not going to be equal because you start somewhere and then you end up somewhere, but I also swatched with them and this is what I have left and I knit size two. So I have this much left still. Yeah, obviously the matrices are listed in the pattern, also for the spun yarn options. So I had like a lot of it left. So you're not really using that much for the contrast color, even though it covers such a large area seemingly, you're not using that much yarn. The reason why you're not using that much yarn is because you're not actually knitting with it, you're just weaving it in, so you, yeah, so you naturally use less yarn. So because of that, it is actually lighter and not as warm as you think it would be. I would still be able to wear it on a cooler spring day, so by that I mean on a normal spring day, because for us spring is anything between 25 degrees celsius to seven or five or three april has been crazy you never know each year is kind of different because we've had years where summer starts really in april and may you already have like the biggest heat waves and this year april has been so normal it's weird and i'm like why is it so cold it just goes from t-shirt weather down again and you still need sweaters so so, you know, you can still knit it and you can still use it. Well, the one downside is that it takes a little bit longer to knit than it would normally. If you're using only two colors, so you have the background and you have the, the little bumps and using only one color, like for example, if I knit the swatch using, I knit the swatch using the green Mantelope single stranded and I used, uh, I think it was knitting for Olive Silk Mahel as the, as my lace weight yarn for the main color. And I think it was colorway bottle green if i'm not mistaken but it pairs really perfectly and i had some i was just making swatches with whatever i had on hand at home so you have quite a lot of different colorways from knitting for olives of my hair so kind of mostly utilize those i used also manchalopi's held quadruple as the contrast color so if you're doing that it will not take as long as if you were switching colors yeah if you're alternating the colors you know like if you have rows where you have you're using like two colors then two strands and two strands then it's just gonna take a bit longer so just check my video and realize that i forgot to put my lights on <laughs> i am chaos personified it's always gonna be something there's always something that's just going wrong where were we so yeah all the technical stuff i'm just not gonna even attempt to do that so you can check out all the details about the pattern in the pattern description on my website ravelry also etsy and you can just read about all the requirements there but the stitch gauge is 18 stitches per 10 centimeters yeah and a notable thing just you know please keep in mind when you swatch that the row gauge of 21 stitches is for main color rows only so please don't get confused thinking that because it seems like a pretty common thing i did write a note about it in the pattern as well but just a 
a reminder, please do not think that you have 42 rows instead of 21 and that your row gauge is entirely off. It is an on needle size uh, 4.0 or whatever else you need um, to meet the gauge and to achieve the best result and the best fabric. Because as always, just a small friendly reminder, the needle I used is just the needle I used and what worked for me. And uh, what works for you might be something else. You might need a bigger needle if you're a tight knitter. You might use a different kind of yarn, a yarn combination, and the fabric is just not going to look good because swatching is not only for meeting the gauge but you also need to check like if you if you like the colors the yarn how the fabric behaves and drapes with the needle size so yeah please swatch and experiment with different needle sizes to find the best option for you and your yarn so what else the sweater is knit from the bottom up and i know that there are a lot of top-down sweater fans and I really do love knitting from the top down as well but I also love knitting from the bottom up and I think that each of these have their own benefits and merits in in, in different situations and it shouldn't always be top down only or bottom up only. Why I actually chose to knit the sweater bottom up is because you basically get this entire part of stockinette to actually get adjusted to the pattern before you move on to the sleeves which is smaller circumference so it is gonna be a bit trickier to knit with this pattern so you basically have time to actually get used to it to get used to this stitch pattern and you know working with it before you do the the trickier part which is the sleeves to include some increases it's kind of like trickier to work than this part and then you will work the raglan decreases simultaneously and also shaping neck and yeah so all the shaping happens up here the yoke and the neck and each shoulder is shaped separately the front stitches are bound off the front is also shaped around the neck with sloped bind offs and so you just work each shoulder separately back and forth why because there is also a small back neck drop to actually optimize the fit so it has this really really lovely shape in the back. I started doing that in Chloe and I've been doing that in everything since. I really really love how the neck feels, how the neckline of the ribbing really wraps around nicely around your neck and around your shoulders. Just works really well with this kind of shaping instead of the short rows. Yeah so each shoulder is worked separately. Um, there are sloped bind offs in front. There's also some sloped bind offs in the back. Yeah it's finished off by folded ribbing which is also my recent favorite. I love I've been including it everywhere as well because it just like I really love how it adds this really really polished finish and please ignore my imperfections i don't know why this one stitch is actually so super fluffy it's super distracting i should fix it but it's been there the entire time if it disappears it's gonna actually be weird be careful how you weave in your ends there's gonna be a lot of ends to weave in obviously with this kind of color work when you're working with this many colors and rows of colors that is always going to be the case you cannot escape that but yeah a couple of things i didn't do that and i should have but one of my test knitters actually suggested that I could actually the ends around the neck fold them inside the neckline before you sew it down and that would have been actually the better option because i kind of you can see that i my samples are not always the perfect especially the first one the prototype so you can see i messed up the it wasn't because of the pattern, it was because of me being a bit brutal and impatient when I was done weaving in all the ends and these were the last ones and I kind of pulled and tugged on them in all kinds of ways that I shouldn't have. <laughs> so yeah, so it ended up like I tried to fix it afterwards, but it's just not the same as it should be. So my neckline is a little bit wonky around here. So yeah, but this, this shouldn't be the case and this shouldn't happen. Just be careful and yeah, like kind of fold them in the neckline you can do that so it just makes it easier and when it comes to weaving in ends as well to just like minimize the amount of ends you have you should cut yarn you could you should break yarn make sure you do it when you're done working with the color so if you're working multiple rows you should carry it up if the color is kind of used shortly but if you see that you're just gonna have like a block where you're not using the color then then is the time to cut it but i kind of also broke them off too frequently another thing i shouldn't have done i ended up with like a really unnecessarily large amount of ends to weave in again my samples are not perfect i don't always do everything the most logical and <laughs> the perfect way sometimes it requires for me to make the mistakes to realize that those are the mistakes and there are better ways of doing these things so yeah so try to minimize the amount of ends you have weave in by carrying the color upwards yeah it's it's kind of inevitable you will have still a lot of ends to weave in so if you're using unspun yarn another notable thing is that you can actually try and felt it is kind of difficult 
to sew with ends but yarn in general so especially you have these quadruple manchalo piece you have all these chunky ends to weave in so what you can try to do is try and needle felt it to the inside because when unspun yarn you can actually do that and that works so that is another alternative approach to that unspun yarn is also less likely to unravel especially after blocking after washing but obviously that won't be sufficient if you want to just make sure to secure everything and these parts are not perfect either so please don't look at them <laughs> yeah this was something that i actually struggled with a little bit i should have done that as well i knew about it but i kind of i didn't think about it because i don't really do this kind of color work often especially in unspun yarn and i kind of just didn't think about felting the ends one of my test knitters actually pointed that out as well um that you can felt the ends in and which is true you can <laughs> you can you can do that a little bit more about the shaping it is a classic raglan but it does include some compound raglan elements with more frequent decreases for some of the sizes and i'm just not gonna say anything in detail because at this point i'm not sure if it's all the sizes or some of them because i already am um, two projects past this so but i just wanted to say that there are some compound raglan elements because i didn't want the yoke to get too long in any of the sizes because it's just not the i'm not going for a really super oversized so it so it's not a compound raglan but it has some compound raglan elements what else so i have all these watches that i made i keep waving around so basically aim for the sky right my idea was which i realized as i was making the swatches before the release to make at least 20 of them and you know to showcase the different variations and as i was making them i realized that they take much longer than i remember and i i think that they do so i did not make 20 of them i have nine in total including some of the ones i made earlier i decided to even though you could use so many different yarns and uh, yarn combinations not only from wool dreamers manchalopis but even other wool dreamers yarns as i earlier before the release i also made this for example one of my favorite summer yarns i love Sona. i just want to knit everything in it and I definitely want to knit uh, something also using Sewona and silk hair because or another lace weight yarn maybe because I really really love this result but um yeah so I was like just out of curiosity swatching with Sewona held together with KFO silk hair and uh, use, using uh, Wuldreamer's Motta and the white colorway held double single strand of Motta obviously and then another layer of Motta if you're knitting the two color version and yeah so Mota is also kind of like a heavy DK weight yarn but I just wanted to I, I made this swatch because I wanted to just basically see if it works and it does I met the gauge spot on the fabric is really interesting really amazing obviously this has like Sona is 50% cotton and 50% wool so yeah obviously this feels this is all spun yarn and this feels entirely different than the very soft cozy version that I knit. I think this would be perfect also for summer because it's kind of like it has this rustic. It's still kind of soft and gentle to the skin and it's it's entirely different. The caro part, the little little squares look like it's entirely different as well because in the original because you're using much lopis held quadruple it's kind of more of a polka dot effect but also depends on what kind of color combinations you're using as well for example the dot effect is kind of heavier in in here and it's the same yarn combination as it is for example in here if you kind of alternate the colors more if you just include more colors in in a single stripe more often so it really will depend but here it really kind of is more like squared paper than anything else and yeah it's a really so you know anything from polka dots to to squared paper caro by the way is just um, a way of saying squared paper in german yeah so i made <laughs> nine swatches and they're all kind of a little bit different a couple of the test knitters actually did make um samples that had the darker manchalopis color as the main and white as the as a contrast color so basically i thought like i don't necessarily have to do that because you can see their projects on instagram ravelry so i just made um some of the colorful ones so this green absolutely beautiful with white as a background this is single strand of manchalopis cave of silk mohair in bottle green and white mantelo piece held quadruple yeah so this one basically the same thing except in, instead of using silk mohair i used alpaca lace from isaiah and slightly different result less fluffy less soft still soft but it's alp alpaca lace it has a bit more a bit more a bit sturdier a bit more rustic feeling to it but still really lovely and nice i did not make a purple sample because i did not have a single lace weight yarn in purple <laughs> that would actually match purple is not really my color normally so i don't have a lot of purple yarns on hand so i did not make it but this would also be beautiful with the white 
And of course, the Sonos watch. A strand of Sona from Woody Metal together with a strand of KFO Silk Mahal. I'm not sure what the colorway is called anymore, but it is this very light green from KFO. It just matches perfectly. Two strands of Woodreamer's Motta as the contrast colors. This was one of the... Not the original swatch, but one of the remaining original swatches. So it's just like different variations. Here you have like, for example, bigger blocks of color. So you can do that. The options are endless. You can just do single stripe in the same color, just much a little piece called quadruple. You can do these really big blocks of color as well. Big as you like, really. Just alternate them. You can just do a fade. You can... Yeah, here I tried to do a little bit of a fade. It's kind of mirrored. And yeah, just using the darker Manchalopis as a contrast color, then just going to the medium gray, to the light gray, and back again. Yeah, one of my testnitters also made a really, really beautiful version using kind of like a fade as well, using Manchalopis. But instead of this mirror effect, she did something um, else where she basically stacked the fades. What I basically did was, since I allowed myself to only use Manchalopis and whatever matching main color kind of lace weight yarn I could find, I was just playing around. I didn't have any particular plan, and as you can see you can just do so much here it's just another variation also just manchalopis held double the white is just quadruple and the other ones are kind of either quadruple or just stacked there are two colors so there's the you can't really see it here but there's the dark gray combined with the dark green and i think it's really pretty i was not sure if if this is too dark but once I made the swatch, I actually really love it. It's one of my favorites. I kind of think it would look really nice in a cardigan. Would you like a Caro cardigan? Because I was thinking that would look really lovely as well. And I would love to have this one as a cardigan, for example. I can see it. Yeah, so... Caro cardigan, what do you think? But I think this is a very pretty combination. I don't know. I love it. It's a bit dark. It's a bit subtle, but... I don't know. It's kind of cool. Another version, just using like a slightly different combination. It's similar to the previous one, but it's differently arranged, the colors. Also really pretty, I think. The last swatch is kind of loosely inspired by one of my test knitters project as well. It was from Anna, who kind of thought to skip some rows. <laughs> so, you know, instead uh, so to have like these this single block. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that actually, but it's also really a great option because that just creates an entirely different effect. And yeah, her stripes were different. It was just the one color. And I have the dark gray here with the green in the middle. So it's it's a little bit different. The proportions are a bit different as well. But I just wanted to just quickly make something like that because I wanted to show you that this is a possibility as well, because you could, don't forget to check out like all the projects, you know, for more inspiration. I haven't covered all of them, but until she did that, I I actually hadn't thought of it as a possibility because I thought of all the combinations you could use the yarn, you know, like create a fade and create different patterns and different color blocks or stripes, but I hadn't thought of actually skipping the rows. And I think that that is actually an amazing idea because you have these... It also makes the fabric much, much lighter as well because you have the main color on its own, then you only have these little color blocks depending on how much space you have here. You can have little stripes, you can have these big big blocks with more space in between and just, you know. The only issue I see is you'd have to pay attention to your gauge. Maybe this alters the gauge kind of like a bit too much if you do the whole sweater with it, but like there's so much you can do with this, really. And as you can see, the possibilities are endless. And this is just nine swatches just with Manchalopis combined for the main color with a, like a different complementary kind of silk my hair or a different lace weight yarn for, for the main color. Yeah, but um, everything else, uh, just manchalopis. Well, okay, sorry. Eight swatches with just manchalopis and another one with Sawana. And this is all wool dreamers. So you could also use Lenrin Conada. You could, you can use obviously Motta. You can use Sawana as the, as the main color. Yeah, you can use a single strand of manchalopis held together with a lace weight yarn as the main color, but then for the contrast color, utilize the amazing opportunity to actually do some stash busting. So pick different yarns for the contrast color. I just really love how, how many options there are. It's just, you could not 
possibly swatch all of them and think of all of them. It's always one of my favorite parts about test nets to just see different interpretations in different yarns and different bodies. Sometimes test knitters just like add kind of their little creative touches or just like a little color here or stripes there. Especially with color work, they sometimes have like an entirely different vision from mine and you know what was kind of moody, they kind of make cheerful with multiple colors. So it's always like nice to see these things. But here, so many of them actually just did something entirely different. And this one test center had like a sweater where like the color work was more dense on the bottom and then like less so on the top. Another one made a pastel version, proving me right that pastels are really beautiful in here. Especially if you use one of the kind of more intense colors and then the rest is pastel or you could just do a pastel fade. Yeah, so really, really beautiful. There were versions naturally that were really gorgeous. Just using two colors. You don't need to have it for joyful and super whimsical. You can just have a plain sweater like with kind of polka dot and it looks really gorgeous really down to earth and another really interesting version that I wouldn't have thought of but it looks really amazing had also a fade but the entire sweater was a fade so it just started at the bottom with mantello piece like darker and just like went brighter 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 until it had white isn't that amazing there's so much potential for creativity and you can try to challenge yourself and use what you've got at home and maybe you just need to buy yarn for the main color for example mantello piece single stranded with silk mohair is just a beautiful choice because it's so soft and lightweight and so so nice uh, against your skin it's just like so pleasant to wear and use whatever else you have at home like maybe a bunch of lopis left over so you can just be creative with the colors or maybe you have some other yarn anything from dk weight yarn to aran worsted weight yarn you just need to make sure you swatch because if the yarn is too thick then it can be that it's kind of hard to slip over, slip on your needles and it's going to get frustrating. So just make sure it glides well enough that you can work with that. Another option, one of the main attractions about this whole thing is actually like weaving in the colors. But a question came up, a good question, because I think that many of you maybe would actually think about it as well. And I thought about it as well, but obviously it was not relevant to me because I was using unspun yarn. And so can you actually just knit the sweater just plain? and then sew in the color later, like just use the tapestry needle and kind of weave in the color later. Yes, you can, but only if you're using spun yarn and whether that would be the better choice, I, I don't know. If it would be quicker, I don't know. Maybe, but you would also have to pay attention what kind of yarn you're using because it might be okay, might be quicker, might be enjoyable with more kind of smoother, more slippery yarns, but if you're using something super sticky and rustic and super wooly, not necessarily. I think that working the pattern as is, is, is the best option because it also is a fun thing, just, you know, arranging your colors, planning your colors, see, seeing it grow and change. And I think it's one of the beautiful parts and the slipping colors is a nice change of pace between the stockinette rows so I don't know have I covered everything maybe it's a really really fun pattern it's fun to work with it's a really nice introduction to unspun yarn it offers plethora of creative opportunity and stash posting opportunity for you so now that the pattern is out in the world go take a look i hope you enjoy it please share please share on instagram make a ravelry project not only it help other people actually notice my work obviously but i just really want to see what you do with this i'm so excited to see all the options and all the combinations and it also helps other knitters to get inspired because one of the reasons why it's so great to have test knitters make Ravelry projects or post on Instagram is but it's for you to see what is possible because I can't physically make all the samples and all the possibilities and all the swatches and different people have different yarn available and they have different ideas and different color preferences and it's just interesting to see how their brains work and how they can take this pattern it's always interesting to see that how they take your pattern they take your design as a as a base recipe and then they add their own creative touch whatever you make please do share your project not only for me to see and admire and share as well if i if i see them i don't always catch every everything that i'm tagged in sometimes I miss some things but make Ravelry project show other people what's possible because I think that's the beauty of it all you can just really get inspired by all these things and I'm so excited for you to knit this one yes that's that I don't know what else I can say you should really just see for yourself and Caro is available on my website Ravelry and Etsy and I really hope you're gonna give it some love I hope that you're gonna enjoy working on it yeah so happy knitting and thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video please show your support by liking commenting and subscribing to future content
Boy. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, wait. There you go. <laughs> I love you, my precious boy. Yeah, I just really actually want to go outside and not talk about carousel anymore. Talks are everything. <laughs>